Show 327 and today we're working in the kitchen outside cold and windy and I've got this piece of furniture I made this years ago out of scraps this was for the back porch shoes go all down here shoes up here stack stuff on top now it's in the kitchen and it's gonna become a island buffet kind of thinking maybe a concrete countertop on top of it about this wide the kids can sit here put their feet underneath it with some stools Direction. The countertop will hang over this side. They'll sit here with stools, put their feet underneath. I'm gonna cover this with bead board. And when I made this years ago, this was just scraps from out in the garage. I got bead board on one side running vertically, on the other side is running horizontally. Kind of a mix match piece. We're gonna try to pretty it up a little bit, paint it, concrete countertop. Hope you enjoy. Out here on the windy, cool front porch, I have a piece of plywood, half inch and two eight foot two by sixes. Underneath there are three bags of sand topper concrete mix. This is for the island buffet. So here on the top of the cabinet, there's a nice little barn scene that's gonna be covered up and there's a little marble holder. I don't know what it was for, but it's gonna be going away. And I've just cut four two by sixes and that will be running longwise, five two by sixes, and I've cut the plywood. Only thing now is to put it on. This two by six will go in between them. Then we'll put some two by sixes in here, maybe one more there, and have drawers that pull out on the other side facing the kitchen. And this will be a little where the kids can sit and eat. That's what's in my brain right now. Okay, I'm attaching my first board, and I'm going to glue it and screw it. And then I'll repeat that on the other end. I could do the same thing to the other side. So I've got four sections, one, two, three, four. This will be where the drawers go in. I'm gonna put glue down here. I'll have a screw come up from the bottom and three screws come in from the end. Now all the frame is built, screwed and glued, it's all in place. There'll be one, two, three, four drawers. I've not built those yet. That's the future. Then the plywood goes down on top of the frame. I'll screw it down and I'll put in the bottle caps, put in the fiber mesh, put the form around for the concrete. And I have to build two legs on the front to keep it from turning over. But it's getting close. What I'm doing now, I'm gluing the top on this plywood board, and then I'm gonna put screws holding it on. So what you just missed, I took the chop saw and I cut that black form. I'm gonna take it back off, clean up all the dust, screw it back down. And then all we have to do is put the mesh in, a little bit of duct tape on the corners, a little bit of caulk, and we'll be ready to pour. Come in for a close-up. The corners, you just 45 them. Tape them so they don't leak. So I've just cleaned all the dust off the top, and I'm going to screw the forms back on.
Now the way these forms work, there's like a scored mark right there, and after the concrete dries, you pull down on it, it breaks off. That's your form broke off. This stays under the concrete, never to be seen again. So on the corner of these form boards, when you put the concrete in, it could pull them apart. I'm going to take some duct tape and put on it to hold it together. I'll put some at the bottom, keep the water from dripping through, and we'll be caulking the insides. And there's the corner fully bandaged up, ready to move on to the other three corners. Now the corners have been taped on the outside. I'm going to run a little caulk maybe around this end to keep the water from running underneath the form and down the side of the cabinet. And in my previous countertops, I've always put in an insert that made the side look like slate. This time we're going with straight sides. See how that turns out. This caulk, I'm just going to run it on the edge. This is stuff you'll never see. I'll take my finger and kind of squish it in a little bit. Put a fan on it so it can dry. Here in a few minutes, we'll be mixing up some concrete. So right now, I've got two box fans laying flat. So they're blowing on the caulk. 10-15 minutes, we'll uh, put the fiber mesh in. Start mixing some concrete. Oh boy, I'm excited. Okay, it's been a few minutes and the caulk is now dry. I'm going to remove the fans and we'll start putting in the fiber mesh. And the fiber mesh is fiberglass, so I'm gonna put on these gloves. I don't love itching. That must be where I cut the sink out of the uh, kitchen countertop. And that was the sink from the tiny house. Now since this mesh wants to roll, Roll back up, I'm going to flip it over, stretch it out, and then the nails inside of the bottle caps, they tend to hold it in place for me. Now the fiber mesh goes right up to this side, comes all the way down to this end, then goes back up this other side. This countertop is going to be just the right width for that mesh. So for my countertop, I'm using the sand mix topping and bedding. It's good from a half inch to two inch thick, and we're going inch and a half. And the good news is we can walk on it in 24 hours. I'm getting ready to do the initial pour, the first pour. So here it goes, pour. The sander. It's good for getting rid of air bubbles. So I just took the sander around the edges, getting the air bubbles out, and it made a little water fall onto the floor. So the concrete's been smoothed off. I fabricated the form boards, getting the air bubbles out. And now it's just a matter of sitting and waiting.
So here we are on the island and I've got a leg in place, not nailed in place, and Mama's already painted red and I'm putting this little kickboard downstairs, dressing it up just a little bit. So when I attach this leg, I'm going to put this block behind it, kind of secure it a little bit. If you slide it on the floor and it catches on one of the tiles, that'll help hold it into place. Okay, it has been about a month in this countertop. It should be good and dry by now. And I've got some dye left over from the tiny house project, but I think we're not gonna dye it. We're just gonna go with the sealer. Instead of a brown look, like the tiny house, I'm going with just to clear the gray. Seal up this gray. That's the plan. I've got my casserole dish. I've got my roller ready to go. if I need to shake this. This is the two hour later second coat. Out in the wood shop, I've got these one by six by eight pine boards and I've got some beadboard scraps. I'm making some drawers for the new kitchen island buffet. This beadboard is tiny house scraps. Using up the scraps. And so I have drawer number one, and it's finished. Drawer number two is finished. Just gave it a little sanding. We're going to either paint it or stain it or something. Two more drawers to go. So here on the floor is a collection of paints. There's fixing to be an artwork on the island. Can't wait to see it. So now the artwork has been painted, and those boards on the floor, that's going to be a frame around the artwork. And if you look at the very tippy top, the screw holes have been filled with mud. Not only that, but the bottom board has also been painted black. So we've decided not everything in the kitchen has to be red. This is a furniture transformation kit. And gray is not how it's going to turn out. You'll just have to wait and see. That's putting the glaze on that gray looking paint around the artwork. It's really looking good. And then the trim around the artwork is going to be this beautiful blue color. Kind of a robin egg blue. So here you can see where the clear coat has been put on. It's still wet. It's shiny. The back side's still gray. It's not been glazed yet. That's kind of a before and after for you. 
So I just put some trim around the artwork. This piece is literally almost done. There's a little bit of black touch-up that has to be done at the bottom. The drawers have to be painted. Handles have to be put on the drawers. And it's done. So done. So now I've got all four drawers built for the island. There's one, two, three, four. One dilemma is this one that stops there, this one goes on in. That one goes on in. Oh, and I've also made these nice custom handles. Kind of a rustic look. Can you believe that? These go behind the drawers to keep from going in too far, so they all go about the same depth in. I'm gonna put these in behind the drawers as stoppers. For the handles, we've got these, and these match the kitchen cabinets, what we already have in the kitchen. So that's what we're doing right now. So with the drawer pulled out, you can see where the little spacer goes. It goes right there. And that'll screw right into place. Just like that. So I found two center holes for the handle. I'm gonna drill these on then we'll screw the handle into place. So the inside of the drawers will be a different color, maybe black. So the glaze has been put on the drawers. The insides have been painted black. There's the paint. Well, most of them, that's a work in progress. And then there's one. So the Kitchen Island Buffet concrete countertop is now finished. The drawers are all glazed and clear coated. The handles are back on. They're all in place. This inside here is going to stay red. It already has some crock pots. Some uh, other good storage going on down there. And in drawer number one, we've got forks. In drawer number two, we've got spoons. Drawers number three and four are to be announced still. I think it might be missing something. And as a little celebration, we got two black stools to go with the custom kitchen, island, buffet, concrete countertop piece.